Wait, so you're asking me my first thought of you? Yep, first thought. Go. It wasn't positive. I, that's okay. That's This is real life. What was it? Uh, it was probably, a, there was an eye roll involved. I, I mean, you're still too much. An so. eye roll involved and oh my gosh, that's yeah. so flattering. For me, it was dang that butt. Chrissy has an amazing butt and I was a seventh grade little boy, you know, and I really wanted to touch that butt. I'm Joe. I'm Chrissy. And welcome to The Married Life. Uh, every week we go live, we answer questions, and we have a discussion about marriage. And we like to kick it off with a question, and we are just asking. So we're putting this uh, list together to help you out when you go on dates with your uh, with your spouse of questions to ask. It's fun. And so we were just talking, like, what questions should we ask this morning to each other? And she started saying it, and then I finished it, and it was... What what did you think when you first saw each other? And there was it tripped Chrissy out. It she's like, me out. she's like, oh my gosh, we're just we spent too much time with each other. We're always thinking. So, what what were your initial thoughts when you first saw me in seventh grade? We met in seventh grade. Yeah. Wait. So you're asking me my first thought of y you? Yep. First thought. Go. It wasn't positive. I, that's okay. That's this is real life. What was it? Um, it wasn't positive. I can't remember, but. I was probably, a, there was an eye roll involved, like, oh my gosh. I, I mean, you're still too much. An so. eye roll involved, and oh my gosh, that's yeah. so flattering. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was dang that butt. Like, that was just, that was it, you know? Like, I just, uh, Chrissy has an amazing butt, and I was a seventh grade little boy, you know? And I really wanted to touch that butt. <laughs> Now I get to touch it all the time because we're married. Me too. Okay, so we are going to dive into some topics uh, from a book by our good friends, Shannon and Cindy O'Dell. They just released a new book. Um, they are sponsoring this podcast today. They don't know that yet, but I'll send them a bill. Um, but this book is 40,000 words about marriage and parenting yeah and it is so good i just got through chapter one uh going into chapter two and it's fantastic uh somebody asked are you guys believers yes we are we are believers somebody also said chrissy looks embarrassed i'm always embarrassed always embarrassed with me so it's fine um, yes, uh, yep, we are uh, believers in Christ, and we're going to talk about that. What does it look like? Like, what is God's heart for your marriage? Uh, here's something super encouraging that Pastor Shannon wrote. And again, you can get this book on Amazon, his website, shannonodell.com. Uh, this, this, this book is amazing. And I loved this quote. Chrissy and I both liked this separately. He said, when people come to me for help, I want to be so full of God's love that they can dip into my life and yeah. drink deeply from the spirit and walk away, uh, walk away changed in every way. So I must stay full of God at all times. Without him, I have nothing to offer. And that's, I mean, that's how I feel. I mean, I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but when, before we were living for Christ, it's like, I wanted to give things to offer, but I just had nothing, nothing. because You're, it was of myself. Yeah, you were empty. There's only, I mean, so much that you can even think for yourself. And it, and it's, even if you do have something to give, it's not worth it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My opinion doesn't matter. And so that, yes, that was such a good quote. And what I realized too, is that if I'm giving out of myself, then I'm expecting my spouse, Chrissy, to fill me back up. Yeah. instead of the Holy Spirit. And that's when we get annoyed with our spouse that, well, I did X, Y, and Z. You should do this back for me. Yeah. But that's where Chrissy and I always teach. It's a hundred zero. Even if your spouse is giving 0%, mm -hmm. we have to give a hundred percent. That's where a healthy marriage is. A healthy marriage isn't keeping score. A healthy marriage is reflecting in the mirror and saying, okay, what else can I do for my spouse? And I know yeah. some of you are going to push back because this happens every week. Every time we talk about this, you say, well, I do X, Y, and Z and they never do anything. I I don't know what to tell you. Like I'm, again, that's where we say get coaching, get counseling, get get you know deeper help. Yeah. But if you're keeping score, you're just hurting yourself mm -hmm. because you guys are on the same team. Yeah, yeah. It's not you serving your spouse; it's you serving your marriage. And so I think if you if you stop keeping track, if you stop keeping score, that's probably going to be a majority of the battle. And so. Um, yeah, quit keeping score. Yep. It's not going to help your marriage. And that's what I love. And this is what he says. He says, how everything, how everything changed in his relationship. He said, it started when we committed, him and his wife Cindy, 
to morning Bible reading, prayer together every night, and open line of transparent communication. Yeah. For me, it's like even this morning I was up at, um, uh, I think it was 5, 4.30 or 5 anyways, having my devotional time praying. Because again, it's like literally a part of my prayer, I say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. Like, Holy Spirit, I need more of you to love Chrissy more. Yeah. I need more of you to love my kids more. Because sometimes, right, can, can we just be real for all the parents out there? You just want to punt your kids sometimes, don't <laughs> you? You just want to see how far you can get them out of the house. Because it's like, oh my gosh, like, get out of here. They're just uh, on 10. Yes, they're, they're just on 10 all the time. And so it, it is, it's, it's spending that time with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and saying, fill me up because I need more of you, God. Because I know what the flesh wants. I know what my selfishness wants. I know who I am and what I want. Uh, but God, I, I need you. I need you to lead me and guide me. Yeah. And so it's like that morning prayer time and then my devotional, you know, um, excuse me, uh, what I read in the Bible, what you read in the Bible, mm -hmm. that fills us up, helps us look more like Jesus. And then I love what he said there about open transparency. Yeah. What do you think that looks like in our marriage? I just think sometimes, well, like you said, sometimes there's days where it's like zero hundred, where it's like, I can't do something or you're, and it's like, you just fill the gap. You don't expect your spouse to do certain things, especially, especially unexpressed um, things. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but if you can't express your needs, don't expect your spouse to do it. But I just think there's some days where I can't do something or there's some days that you can't do something. And it's like, you gotta be transparent about it. Be like, I, I'm just not there today. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I'm really struggling here. Just being open and honest with your spouse at all times about all things. And so, I mean, we talk about vision retreats and having expectations of certain things, but some days you just can't do it and it should be okay. Yep. That's transparency to me. Yeah, transparency is. It's You know, the Bible talks about that God made Adam and Eve and they were naked and unashamed. And that's how our relationship and openness needs to be. A lot of time <clears throat> when we mess up, we want to hide things and there's shame in that. So then we don't actually allow our spouse in to those deeper places of transparency because we get worried. What will they think of me? Not understanding, like, again, God created us to be naked and unashamed. And so we should be able to, be, if I should be able to be transparent with anyone, it's Jesus and Chrissy. Yeah. Like it's Jesus and Chrissy. It's Jesus and your spouse. Well, I like this comment. If you can't express your feelings, why be married? Well, I think there's a lot of, I agree with that statement. Yes. But I do think there's a lot of trauma that comes maybe from like an upbringing, you know, maybe, well, this is my truth. My truth is my parents never like when you were mad, you just didn't look at each other you didn't talk about it, you didn't do any of that stuff, or if you were upset about something, you just kind of gave them the cold shoulder until you were over it, mm -hmm. which, what, two, three days, or whatever the case may be. And it might have nothing to do with you, it might just be me, And but you can't do that, because we all get offended, we all go through things, and if you just randomly not respond to your spouse for two to three days, those two to three days add up. And yeah. so, yes, I agree with your statement of, <laughs> You know, you definitely should be able to express your feelings. But I just think that, um, you know, people learn from their parents, the good and the bad, and you have to work those things out. Well, what it is, is it's unlearning and learning healthy communication. Because we all communicate, but it doesn't mean that we are all hearing the same thing. You know what I mean? It's like we're all communicating something, but we can be saying the wrong thing the wrong way or the right thing the wrong way. Uh, and that, and when that happens, we start putting up a wall. Uh, the other spouse starts putting up a wall because they don't like the way that our tone's coming across, the way that we're communicating, the, the time we're communicating, what we're saying. Uh, it feels like one person's putting the other down. And so instead of b bridging uh, that gap of communication, you're actually destroying it. So that's why Chrissy and I, even in our e-course, it's available, links in our bio, uh, the second module is about communication. Like one of the best ways that you can learn how to communicate is, is studying your spouse. What is their love language? Uh, what's their Enneagram type? Um, how, do they, how do they process things? How do they, Cause Chrissy and I see things very differently. I bet you and your spouse see things very differently. You think different. You didn't marry yourself. You didn't marry a clone. You married someone else. Yeah. And so it's learning how to communicate with that person uh, that's different. Um, let's see. Let's see what else he has. So this is what we want to get onto today, okay? He talks about 10 ways that a man can honor a woman and 10 ways that the wife can honor the husband. And so that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about honor. We're going to go back and forth and then maybe talk about things. 
one, one more time. We'll show that up for everybody. There it is, 40,000 words, get it today. Uh, we're gonna talk about this. Also, if this is helping you at all right now, you can hit that like button, you can share this so other people can be helped um, and, uh, because we that's what we wanna do. We just wanna help pouring into marriages. So the first thing he said, and I love that, this for men, 10 ways a man can honor a woman prioritize Christ. And that, that's kind of like what we already talked about. Like I have my devotional first thing in the morning. Yeah. I need him mm -hmm. because when I'm doing it on my own strength, I'm going to fail you. Well, here's the thing. You, when you realize, and I know a lot of you might not be believers, but Christ gives us unconditional love. He gives us love when we don't deserve it. And so if you've never experienced that before, this isn't going to make sense to you. If you are a non-believer, this will not make sense to you. And so if you are a believer, you, that's what you need to tap into. Mm -hmm. You need to tap into every single day the um, undeserved um, love from Jesus because that's the love that we need to give our spouse. That's what we um, need to like pull from when our spouse does not deserve it. Um, and we don't want to give it. And so that's why it's so important to us because we can't do it on our own strength. I have enough junk in my own heart that I need to deal with. And some days I just can't give what I need to give him. And so that's why it's so important to us. Yeah. Um, also, somebody asked, what book is this? It's called 40,000 Words About Marriage and Parenting. It's by Shannon O'Dell. And then somebody also commented, they said, that's what I miss about my par my grandparents the most, their morning devotional time. Yeah. Um, Start it yourself. Yep. You got this. You know, that's legacy. Okay, uh, so that was number one for uh, a man. The number one, 10 ways a woman can honor a man. The first one is, here it is. Oh man, the camera shut off. Oh, be full of faith. I yes. think as a wife, being full of faith specifically for your husband is so important. Um, you should be their number one cheerleader. If they're really the head of your household, they have a lot of weight on their shoulders, not just financially. You might be the breadwinner as a wife. Like, I'm not talking about that. But as like a leader in the house, they, you need to be full of faith for them. Some days they don't act like they're, they're the leader. Some days they probably don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. But you should be their number one cheerleader. Their job is going to knock them down every day people around them are going to knock them down every single day but if they know that their wife you are in their corner i'm sure they're going to fight even harder for the things that they need to fight for and so i think being full of faith for your husband is probably one of the most important things that you can do for them yeah other than pray for them yeah so for all the ladies out there if you're going to be full of faith for your husband i want you to tap the screen right now for those hearts and go ahead and share this so other women can hear that about being full of faith. And if you're on the podcast right now, you can rate and review us if you're gonna be full of faith. The second one, this is hard for us guys, right? For this, how you can honor your spouse. Ready for it? Lead in shaping your kids. It's not just your wife's role. Mm -hmm. It's your role too. Uh, what was that study that we, we looked at talking about the importance of a daughter in the ages where yeah. they are shaped the most? Mm -hmm. It's like, I think it's ages three to eight. It's like three to eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're very, the years that you don't think that your daughter, like as a husband, your daughter needs you is very young. You actually shape the, like in their mind, you shape the husband that they're gonna choose in their future mm -hmm. at that young of an age. So the way that you treat your daughters specifically um, is the way that they're gonna choose the man in their future and I think that's pretty darn important yeah so that's why even for me I try to take the girls out on dates um, Ellis he's only 20 months um, we spend time together but uh, Chrissy and I we even read a book it's called shepherding a child's heart it's really good mm -hmm. about how do we actually raise a child because everyone has different views so we yeah. want to get on the same page yep. what does it look like what's the godly way of doing this uh, number two yeah be trustworthy this is for the wives being trustworthy yeah to your husband yeah right yep explain that to me he said, <laughs> I was like, that's pretty simple. <laughs> that's what he says. He says, say it and do it. It's that simple. Be, Be trustworthy. trustworthy. Yeah. I just think being open and honest, I think it obviously goes both ways, but we have passwords that we don't have hidden. We've got, I mean, 
trustworthy. I don't think that needs explanation. I yeah. don't know. Um, and not to get off, but somebody said, do you frost your hair, dude? No, it's the lighting. Like, I, th <laughs> it's funny. My aunt, she asked the same thing if I bleached my hair since being no. out here in California. No, not, a, not at all. That is funny. But thank you. No, that, that takes me back to seventh grade when we met. Uh, no. Maybe I should. I just said men need to be trustworthy to you people. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We all yes. need to be trustworthy. Yes. yes. That book, Shepherding a Child's Heart by Ted Tripp. Yes. Yep. That's so the book good. that we're talking about. Um, another thing for men, ready for this, is how you can honor your wife, lead spiritually. And again, that's why I get up in the morning. I don't put that on Chrissy to be the first one up, to be in prayer, to be reading her word. Um, I'm the one who's doing that, engaging. Um, I, I try for the most part for us to engage in nighttime prayer but usually we're pretty toe so it's about a five second prayer yeah and then we roll over and go to sleep yeah. um but it is it's engaging uh even around uh the table on sundays i ask the kids what did you learn from church today uh we discuss what we got from church uh all those things so husbands lead spiritually and what that looks like um, i do want to comment on this somebody said so honor your husband but it, it goes both ways absolutely it goes both ways but there is something within a man that he actually it's like one of his needs it's like the the deepest need of a man is honor yes we need honor but the deepest need of a woman is actually security and so i'm sure you need to feel secure you don't like to feel like all over the place but it's our deepest need and so his deepest need as a man and a husband is honor and so that's what we're saying we're not saying that none of these should be reciprocated trustworthy needs to be reciprocated honor needs to be reciprocated but we're talking about the deepest needs of the individual because like he said we are not the same a woman and a man is not the same we have different needs and so um yes i agree with you but um but somebody, uh, just to be clear though, we're, we're going back and forth, like the 10 ways to honor a, a wife, the 10 ways to honor a husband. Yeah. Um, somebody also asked if we're pro-life, 100%. I don't know why that was like even a, on here, but yes, um, in all the, the ways possible, pro-life, um, because God is pro-life. Uh, 10 ways a woman can honor a man, number three. Make your marriage a priority. I think a lot of the times, um, especially when you have children and then um, a job outside of the home, you can get very caught up and uh, not distracted because these are good things in your life, but those things can take a lot of your time. And so you just have to make sure that you are, like nothing in your life is gonna be equal parts, right? You're not gonna give your children equal time especially if you have a baby babies take up more time than so it's not that you needed to spend so much time it's not about quantity but i do think it's about quality you need to make sure that your marriage is definitely prioritized yep uh the next one for guys husbands how you can honor your spouse defend her guard her physically emotionally socially spiritually you are the man protect and defend her uh, particularly wherever she is weaker you want to be able to defend her uh, yeah uh, too many guys take shots at their spouse in order to get a cheap laugh from a friend yeah. stop that you're a child like let's just be real like you're not a teenager anymore uh you're not even a young adult you're an adult you're a man act like a man defend your spouse mm -hmm. don't take shots at her to get a, la a laugh from your friend yeah. um okay uh I'm trying to find out where we just were for you okay right here oh be serious about your time oh i need to do that yeah that's how you can <laughs> honor me <laughs> uh yeah i think managing your time um well managing like i said and it's not all quantity it is quality you can't it's just not possible to get every everything an equal amount of time but you can manage your time well you can manage your marriage you can manage your children you can manage your household and your job and all that kind of stuff but try to manage it manage it well yep um next one chrissy just already hit on this it's so true uh give her your passwords like if you want to honor your wife give her every password to TikTok, to Facebook, to Instagram, to uh, your bank account. Like, and I love what Pastor Shannon said here. He said, separate accounts breed separate lives. So share your accounts. Uh, the next one for uh, the wife, how you can honor the husband. Be aware of your finances. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. 
I don't know if that needs explaining either. I know, right? Like, be aware of them. Just don't think that everything's always, you know, up and to the right. Like, you have to actually pay attention. You have to have a budget. You have to be looking. You have to be like, what do we need to cut back on? Yeah. Where should we be investing? What does that look like? So, yeah. good way to honor. No, that's good. Uh, for the husband, serve her. I love this. He says, think where you can make her feel special and pampered and do it. Maybe pick the thing that she hates to have to do and man up and do it yourself. What do you hate to do the most in our house that I could do for you? Oh, like household work? Or anything. All of it? <laughs> Is that an option? Man, that was a loaded question. All right, guys, be careful when you ask that one. Uh, maybe not even ask it. Maybe just see something she doesn't like to do and try to try to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just set myself up for, a, for a, a full day. Mm -hmm. um, right here. Be serious about mothering. Yeah, no, that's a good one. I think the, how, the um, atmosphere that you set up in your household, it's on you. You have control of what comes into your home, whether it's social media, um, I know friends at school, but you have higher authority. And so I think that whatever your house looks like, if you don't like it, there's two things. One, you can fix it, and two, it's your fault. So, <laughs> um, so you have to be very serious about the way that you're raising your children. And so if you need help, get help. Yep. If you don't know what you're doing, ask. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody does. That's, that's why we read the book. Uh, shepherding a child's heart. Hey, yeah. if this is helping you and if you are going to focus on mothering your children, hit those heart buttons right now and hit that share button so other mothers can hear about how important it is to do this. And then um, it's called 40,000 words. You guys can see that. Is it backwards to you people? I don't think so. By Shannon Odell. By Shannon Odell. Yeah. 40,000 words that's the name of the book it's on amazon it's on his website it's a, mm -hmm. yeah um the next thing is uh i like this for men how men can honor your spouse it says tell her you'll get more about this in the pages to communicate but for now on in a unique way tell her just one thing you like about her and love about her like your words men weigh so much the, you know i craig rochelle said this he's like every time i think a good thought i try to express it Every time you think a good thought about your spouse, express it to them. Yeah. And somebody just said hi from Ohio. Hello, Ohio. And they said the book's backwards. Oh, it is backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, next one for the wife to honor the husband. Ooh, serve big time. No, I love that. Um, I think serving your spouse is an honor because... I, I don't know. I think it's like, it's an honor to me to be able to serve my spouse. I think it creates such a culture in our home that one, I don't think the world follows. And so it's just, I don't know. It's special to me. We serve each other. I don't just serve you. Cause I know somebody's going to save that. Um, but we serve each other. It's, it's just a part of our culture. We're trying to teach our children because you know, they don't like that, yep. but we're a family unit. We are a, um, we're a team yep. and so we serve each other and I don't know, maybe it's my mindset. Maybe you need to change your mindset. If you don't like to, um, if you don't like to serve your spouse, you should probably like switch something in you because that's why you got married. Yep. You got married to serve your spouse. And so it's an honor to me. Yeah. I, uh, somebody just said on here, hi from uh, South Africa and also hi from New England. What's up? We're from hi. California. How's it going? Uh, you know what? And also when you were saying that about serving, it's showing our kids because we live right right now. We have a camera facing us. We're looking at ourselves. We live in such a selfie focused world right now. And we have to turn that and show our children. It's not about you. We have to serve. And that's why, like, even for our church, our main thing, like our four core values, our last core value is serve your world. And our world is our home. It's the, you know, where we go to the gym, our neighborhood, our coffee place. It's, it's the places where you walk the most and serving. And again, if it doesn't start in your home, how are your kids going to know how to serve? Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. we have, we have to start that for sure. Also, uh, if this is helping you out and you want more of this every Monday, we go live. You can follow us right now here on TikTok. Uh, and then also if you're on the podcast, you can rate and review this. So more people uh, can hear this kind of information. Again, all this is just ripped off from Shannon Odell and Cindy Odell in their new book, 40,000 words about marriage and parenting. If you need help with marriage and parenting, boom, here's a new book. Uh, 
the la uh, the, another one, there's two more for guys, two more for ladies. Um, or sorry, three more. And we're going to run through these real quick. For guys, say yes and mean it. You said yes to the altar. That meant forsaking all others. Keep it that way. Turn your back on the door. Burn the bridges and remove the girl at work from your Facebook friends list. Say yes just to your spouse. Don't say yes. Don't be flirting. Don't be looking. Say yes to her. Every day. Say la. All right, next one for you. Um, <clears throat> Ooh, have an entrepreneurial spirit. I, I, yeah, if you, I think that's good. I think just being able to, if you don't work outside the home, I think it's just a spirit that you have. Always wanted to do and accomplish and, and just move your family forward. I think that's a really good spirit to have. Great but. question. So parent question, what if your kids drink since you're Christians, would you punish them? How old are they? If they're 21, it's their own, you know, uh, what's it called? Why well, can't I think of the word? Their freedom, right? Like they're right there, all that stuff. Um, drinking isn't a sin, getting drunk is a sin. Uh, our goal is to again, lead them and guide them and shepherd them that they wouldn't do that. But so just so you know, there is, there's hope if you're like, yeah, he's 22 and he's getting drunk or 24 or whatever. There's hope because that was me. Like, I mean, I was getting wasted and my mom would make me go to church and sit on the front row hung over. And she's like, I could smell the alcohol coming out of your pores. But she kept praying for me. She never gave up on me. She believed that God was going to do a work in me. She didn't try to do it because that's when, again, we push the kids away more when we start hounding them, especially when they're adults. We just pray and believe for them. Yeah. What would you say about that? Well, I just want to kind of look at the question in a couple different ways. If they are underage living in your house, absolutely. Call, call the cops. They're breaking the law. <laughs> absolutely, they need to be punished. But if they are of age and still in your house, you can still punish them. If they are living under your house and your rules, absolutely, you can do that. I was looking to see if she said, I was scrolling to see if like they were oh. saying the age. Sorry, I TikTok is so weird. Like once you like start scrolling, it just jumps to the bottom. So um, yeah, I hope that helped out. I, I didn't see the age or anything yet. Um, next one. I love this one, okay? Guys, how you can honor your wife, touch her. Touch your boo and don't be a pervert about it, okay? When I'm non -sexual. talking about non-sexual touching, rub her back, bring her in close, hug her, kiss her forehead. She feels, like right there, like Chrissy said earlier, She there's a security there. I asked Chrissy, we were talking about this, it was one of our questions, like what's our favorite way to touch each other, something yeah. like that. And um, you said it was when I hug you, right? Because mm -hmm. you're like, I just like your arms being around me. There's a security there. Uh, and and do it in front of your children. And I love Pastor Shan said this. He said, the kids may say you, but secretly they will love it. Yeah. And I got to tell you, that's that's our kids, you know, mm -hmm. like they, they say you, but then they run up and they try to get all close to us, like as we're hugging or kissing. Uh, oh, the best way to punish your children. <sighs> that's between you and your spouse. I don't know how your household runs. Uh, if they're of age, yeah, that's up to you. So if they're of age and they're drinking in your house, it's your house, so you can set those rules. Yeah. So it's like, you know, for my... my. But they're saying how to punish them now. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, it, it depends the age, you know, grounding, taking things away. Um, again, that's where really I can... I say that book, uh, Shepherding a Child's Heart. And we haven't gone that far in this book yet. It talks about parenting. Pastor Shannon might actually have the answers in this book so we can get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it is. It's coming together with your spouse and saying, what's the best way that we can actually uh, discipline our children um, and let them know it. Like, hey, this is not something that's okay. This is not our culture. There are consequences. That's what the law is, right? Like the law in our nation, if you break the law, there are consequences. And each consequence has a different, or each each law that's broken has different consequences. So like if you murder somebody, those are higher consequences than if you just speed, right? One, you're getting a ticket or a warning. The other one, you're going to prison uh, for life. So there is a difference. So that's where you and your spouse, you have to be able to have those conversations. Um, yeah. All right, next one for, for a hus or a wife oh, honoring a husband. Be a giver. I think um, greed in our world in general is killing a lot of people. If we can learn to be better givers in general and just be generous and yeah. not so self-consumed, 
I think our whole world will be better and that starts in our home. So we need to be givers, I think as women, just, I don't know. Yeah. Don't be consumeristic, give it away, who yep. cares? Yep. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I was just thinking about too when it comes to punishing your child again, cause I don't know their age, but a lot of things are, it's, it's helping them try to see like, what do they want their future to be? Now again, if they're teenagers, they're selfish, they're, you know, like it's it's hard to get there. Like yeah. that's how I was. But you really are trying to paint a picture for them of their future and where they want to be. Okay, last one for the guys. Date her. She is still your girlfriend, so plan a great table date and make it a weekly habit. We do this. Yeah, we do. And I love this. Like I talked about this, I did a, mm. a teaching um, on prayer and why prayer is important. Now, I don't love prayer, even though I'm a pastor, okay? I love Jesus, and therefore, I spend time in prayer because I wanna be with him. It's the same thing with dating, right? You might not love dating, but if you love your spouse, you're gonna enjoy dating. You're gonna date, you know, mm -hmm. because you wanna get closer to your spouse. So, I would say it's that same thing, and for men, set it up. Decide where you're gonna go, because we've all been there, right, guys? Let's just get honest. Once we ask our spouse, once you ask your wife, where do you wanna go for dinner? Chrissy, where do you wanna go for dinner? Oh, yeah. And, and that's it. Now, I do know this. She says she doesn't care, but she will not want to go to Chinese food unless it's like a healthy Chinese place that's like homemade dumplings and stuff like that. Uh, so guys, just plan it out. Pick the place, but don't be selfish. Think of things that she likes because I can naturally be selfish about this. I want to go go-karting. I want to go to Top Golf. I want to go to the movies. I want to go do that kind of stuff, you know? Chrissy wants to go for a walk. She wants to go to the mall and she wants to bore me to death. And so... <laughs> <laughs> but I do that. I'm like, let's go shopping, babe. Let's do it. You walk around. Uh, we'll look at all the stuff that we want. Even the other day, we were out at a restaurant and across the street was, what was it? Home Goods or something like that. That big furniture store. She did oh. say, should we go in there? I was like, no. Like it was, it, 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 it was massive. We would gotten lost for days. Um, okay. Last one for the ladies. <laughs> this is a good one. Burn the Honey Not Tonight gown. We all have it. Just burn it. There are lots of comfy, comfy pajamas out there that aren't gross and a sackcloth. Yeah. So just burn it and just wear something else that's comfortable and cute. <laughs> that's it. That's it for sure. Uh, again, this book is uh, 40,000 words about marriage and parenting. It's by Pastor Shannon Odell. Uh, you guys can Google him. You can look on Amazon. I know some people thought that was hilarious. Uh, he is so funny. Uh, we love him. He's part of our board for our church. He's an amazing man of God. Cindy's amazing, a uh, woman of God. Uh, all their kids love Jesus. Some are, I think they might all be in ministry. I'm not sure. But anyways, we've learned so much from him and continue to learn from him. So if you're a believer in Christ, maybe you're not even a believer in Christ, but you want to strengthen your marriage and your family, we cannot recommend this book enough. There's also a workbook that yeah. I'm excited to go through. We yep. just finished chapter one, so now we can go through the workbook uh, together. So I hope hope this helped you guys out. Uh, again, you know what? Uh, we might keep going through this book because for Chrissy and I, we invest in ourselves to invest in others. And so that's what this was. We literally have been reading this the last three days. I think we got on Friday. Yep. So we read the last two days and we just thought, hey, what stood out to us? Let's share that with other people. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. So uh, again, if this helped you out today, you can actually hit that like button. You can follow for more uh, as we do this every Monday. Uh, and same thing uh, if you are, ooh, I like that. The Honey Not Tonight gown is a challenge. Somebody's taking it on. Well, oh, I wait. hope that's what that means. I thought, I thought they meant... I wonder what they did me. I thought they meant like it's a challenge, like I'm going to burn it. I'm going to burn her. It's poison. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was for, could you imagine? This is, that part's for the wives when all the men are just taking all their, like, nope, this isn't attractive. Burn it. Burn Throw it away. It. Get it rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Um, but anyways, yeah, if you're on the podcast, rate and review us. We hope this helped you guys out. Uh, and we're excited about always putting out marriage content uh, to help invest in your marriage. Again, that's it. We want to invest in ourselves to invest in you. And we believe by investing in you, it's going to make a difference in you and in your children and future generations. Love you guys. Thanks for joining. See you.